Well, the scandal at the U.S. border is even worse than we could have possibly imagined. This week, we learned the U.S. government has been secretly flying uh, illegal immigrants into the United States from their from their countries, destinations around the United States. Whatever cities you want to go to, they'll take you there, bypassing border security checkpoints, delivering them right into U.S. cities. And the only reason we know this is through litigation. They weren't forthcoming with this information. Donald Trump, during his victory speech on Super Tuesday, said the world is laughing at us. We've watched our country take a great beating over the last three years. He's the worst president in the history of our country. There's never been anything like what's happening to our country. Today it was announced that 325,000 people were flown in from parts unknown. It's uh, sad to see what's happening to our cities. Our cities are being overrun with migrant crime, and that's Biden migrant crime. But it's a new category of crime, and it's violent where they'll stand in the middle of a street and have fistfights with police officers. And if they did that in their countries from where they came, they'd be killed instantly, instantly. They wouldn't do that. So the world is laughing at us. The world is taking advantage of us. But the crisis at the border is far worse than we can even imagine. Those are the words of a former Customs and Border Protection Officer, J.J. Carroll, the author of the book called Invaded. And JJ joins us now to break all of this down. JJ, welcome to the show. Glad to have you here for the first time. Thanks for having me on. I think this is the biggest topic to discuss because it is the number one threat to our republic. It's not China, Russia, Iran, the Middle East. It is the intentional and strategic destruction of our immigration system. And it is happening in real time in front of us. So you spent 24 years as a Customs and Border Protection Officer and you have, over that 24 years, I want to get into the specifics of the 320,000 being delivered, but over the course of that 24 years, what did you notice? Did you notice a, a total degradation of the, of the border? What, just can you give me an idea as to why you decided to leave after those 24 years? Uh, to 24 years, and I, I was a frontline agent in the border down in T1 and San Diego sector, but I rose up to senior leadership. So I have a very unique perspective on what's going on. I can tell you exactly what's happening on the border, what it looks like, smells like, tastes like, who we're arresting, why we're, why the policies that are being used from top down. In 24 years, I went through Republican presidents, Democrat presidents, and it was kind of a, all the same. It's a uniparty issue. I was on a losing team and I love, I'm not a disgruntled uh, federal employment officer. I am a very proud border patrol agent with the men and women that, that we secured the border under Donald Trump, the greatest border president. It don't, you don't have to like anything. You don't like his tweets, his hair, whatever, but he secured the border. We were within six to nine months of having the border completely secured. Let wow. me give you some example. Wow, At six to nine months. Donald, six to nine from months. having complete secure. Wow, I've never heard okay, that before. And people say, well, that's not, that's not, how do you say that? Well, I'm not an academic looking out from the outside in. I was there. I was in the belly of the beast for 24 years, frontline. I know what happened. So what Donald Trump did is he shut the border down. We are, let me give you just data so you have a, a put this in some context. At the end of Donald Trump's term, remember he fought for over, over two years with his own party to get funding for the wall and any kind of help to secure the border. Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan, they, they sabotaged his whole thing. I watched it in real time. At the end of Donald Trump's term, he was arrest we were arresting under Donald Trump 566 people, illegal aliens a day across the nation, northern border, southern border, coastlines. That's it. And we were and we were deporting every single one. The moment Joe Biden came into office, 5,000 a day. 5,000. This so this invasion has been going on from the day Biden took office to now. And why you're asked the question, why did I leave? My last year in the Border Patrol as a deputy patrol agent in charge was Joe Biden's first year. I saw it coming down. I saw that freight train of treason pouring down in my face because for the first time in my, my whole 24 year career, we were doing things that we had never done before. So the Border Patrol has 100 year anniversary coming up in May. 
for 97 years, we never did what we're doing now under the three years under Joe Biden. Nothing. Clayton, there's not one thing that we're doing now that we did. We never released people. This is an anomaly. We never allowed special interest aliens to pour into our country and then release them into America. This is just so I'm very clear. I am absolutely certain that this is intentionally done. It is strategically planned by Mayorkas. Joe Biden doesn't know what planet he's on. So Mayorkas is running this. <laughs> and we are seeing the complete destruction of the immigration system to use their words to fundamentally transform America. And we're, right. and we're, we're living in it. Yesterday, Elon Musk tweeted that this is far worse than 9-11, that they're planning. What they're planning is far worse than 9-11. This seems intentional, what's happening. And then, of course, we learn from the Daily Mail this 320,000 illegal immigrants being flown by the United States government into cities of their choosing using the Customs and Border Protection One app that on their phone, they just punch in where they want to go, basically, almost like you're booking a Southwest Airlines flight. And here, the Customs and Border Protection, they'll just, they'll fly you. But you, yesterday, you were telling me, Clayton, this is far worse than anyone can even possibly understand. What what the, we're hearing in the Daily Mail is one part of it. Can you explain, first of all, how is this possible? And then how is this worse? Okay, so what they're doing, Center for Immigration Studies, CIS.org, it is unparalleled in the knowledge and the white papers they put out for uh, immigration for decades. They did a FOIA request back in prior to summer. And then in June and July of 2023, there was an anomaly in the arrest data. We were about 50 to 60,000 arrests lower than all the other months around it. And everybody that was in the business like I am went, hold it, hold it, time out. This isn't happening, not in the summer. This is the big months. And then the FOIA dropped and CBP DHS responded to CIS.org and said, yes, in fact, we have released 221,000 illegal aliens, flew them in to America. They didn't, they didn't cross the border, get on planes and fly out, which millions are doing. United States of America flew them into America and released them into our airports. Now, Daily Mail now says that was in June, July. Now says the number is about 331, 332,000. Okay. That's shocking on its own. But when you look at, there's a gentleman that runs a podcast called Monkey Works. I know it sounds crazy, but he does current events, has a huge following, but he follows, and this is very important, he follows and tracks airplanes coming into America, international and domestic flights. He just does it. This is his hobby, if you will. In December, he came out, and, I've, and I have other data to prove this. He tracks Swift Air. What is Swift Air? They are under the name iAero Airways. Swift Air has been bought and sold in bankruptcy multiple times. However, Swift Air gets millions and millions and millions of dollars from the United States government under COVID and some other just in, insane stuff. But what is Swift Air doing? Monkey Works tracked in two, 2023, 7,280 flights into America from outside, mainly from South America and Latin America and from other countries. They're using 737, so have about 200 people per, per flight. And they're flying illegal aliens into our country at the number, and his estimate guest is 1.4 million. So before everybody says, well, that's crazy, hold on a second. You just had the federal government fly in 331,000 illegal aliens in literally in the dark of night, took it off the data, their arrest database and hit it. And I'm telling you, no, that's just a portion of it. They just have not admitted to the other 1.1 million minimum that they have flown into America. So you have, you have right now 11 million illegal aliens that have been arrested and then released on the border. Then you have another 1.4, 1.5 million that they have flown into America, illegal aliens. And you're right, they're using a CBP-1 app. Literally, I can use the same data that the same app that I make a reservation at my, my favorite restaurant. There's no vetting. And if you want to get even further into CBP-1 app, the Mexican drug cartels have hacked the geofencing in the, G, in the CBP-1 app. So now the cartels control 
who's using the CBP one app. Do you think that the, the cartels are going to allow them, the American government to stymie their profit margin? Come on. This, so, this is so malicious. So for our audience and for, for me, who aren't familiar with how exactly the cartels then would function and profit in this way, can you break that down for us? Obviously, you know this deeply, having been in Tijuana, okay, you know so, how these, these, yeah. uh, these cartels operate. So first off, the audience needs to understand that no one crosses the border, no one without paying the cartels, no one. When you watch these people pour over in the thousands, they have wristbands on, colored wristbands to tell the cartels who owns who. Oh yeah, this is very, think of a giant uh, Amazon Prime uh, distribution center. Here they come into like say Lukeville or Eagle Pass. Well, the cartels, they're working it. The, How much you, money you do does it cost? Eagle Pass. Well, it depends on where you come from. A Mexican national, maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred. Maybe someone from Uzbekistan, thirty thousand. China, forty. It just depends on how far they have to travel and the risk involved of moving that person. Do they need to allow that individual just to cross the border and squat and get arrested, or is this somebody as a known terrorist or somebody that is PLA soldier? Well, I'm gonna have to move him through a car or something through the open border. So then the cost rises. But you talk about the CBP one app and how, so the, they have a geofencing. You can't get on the, the CBP one app and make a reservation to be let through the port of entry and be paroled in through asylum. So they hack that. So if I am, say I'm the, I'm the smuggler in Tijuana or wherever the, or Brownsville, Texas, or here in the US, wherever, I, and, and you're from Uzbekistan, I'm gonna sell you one of those 1500 slots every day. Every day we bring in over 1,500 people and just blanket amnesty, uh, excuse me, asylum. Go ahead. You're free to go. 1,500 a day, 44,000 to 45,000 a month, a month that we just allow walk in outside of everyone else that we do. So the cartels hack the geofencing. The guy from Uzbekistan to Sudan or Yemen says, I want to just get in America. Okay, well, you give me $40,000 and we'll put you in the CBP one app. We will fly you in so at, as if you're in the northern part of Mexico and then you walk into America. And I know that people hear this. And as I wrote my book, Invaded, there were times that I wrote stuff and I stopped and I reread it and I thought, no one's going to believe this. It is so insane, but everything is documented. Everything that I'm telling you today and that you're reading to me from the Daily Mail is true. It's happening. Well, we have a we have a saying on this show, you know, conspiracy theories are just spoiler alerts for six months from now. Right. Yes. So and on this show, we don't believe in coincidences. Right. So our audience is is very smart and they've they've been played. Our audience has been played yes. and they are sick and tired of being lied to. So now we have an app that's being funded by U.S. taxpayers, hacked by Mexican drug cartels. And every day the they're flying these individuals in. So who's doing these flights? These are CBP pilots? Are they, who's doing these flights, bringing these individuals into the United States? And then what sort of amenities are we providing these individuals? They get into Chicago or New York or other cities, St. Louis. Are we giving them money? We're giving them uh, housing. What exactly then happens with the mechanics behind that? Okay, so that is a very great question because no one's been able to truly get the data on this. But let me explain. So if you're overseas and you want to fly into America, you have to have a passport. If you're not a U.S. citizen, you need a visa, right? You have to have right. a visa to come into yeah. America. So we are flying. Let's just don't even use Monkey Works. Let's just use the FOIA data. 331,000. 331,000 people flew into America without the proper immigration documents. They didn't have a visa. Some of them don't even have a passport. So how did they get on these planes? So the only, the only intellectual uh, argument we can have or deduction we can have is the federal government has to have worked with the airlines and said, you are going to allow everyone in. I don't, it doesn't matter if you have immigration documents or not, or they're using one company like Swift Air to fly them in, but that's just one airline. So has anybody, does anybody remember 9-11? Does anybody remember hijacking planes and flying them into buildings? Are you telling me that the terrorist nations 
don't know that this is a weakness, that they could fly into, say, Ecuador, jump on a plane through the CBP-1 app and fly in to Chicago, Detroit, New York, and fly planes in, hijack stuff. I mean, it's beyond it's, it's, it's beyond rationality. I mean, people and need to wake up. Talk about, this is all orchestrated. There's yes. no there's no other way. Is it your assessment, JJ, that there's no other way this could be happening without the direct involvement of the U.S. government, the direct involvement and coordination of the U.S. government? I absolutely believe that this is done intentionally. I absolutely, and I detail it in my book. It There is, look, when you, when I have these discussions, and I'm sure you have with liberals and, and even rhinos, because this is a uniparty issue. And we have this discussion back and forth, and I say that it's intentional destruction, and they push back and go, well, I don't believe that. My response always is, the data is true. You agree that the data, it's on the website, it's DHS, CBP, it's all true. Everybody agrees it's true. If you don't believe that it's intentional, that they have done this strategically, then tell me what in the hell's going on. And there's always silence because there is no other explanation. Listen, if you were in Japan, and you were a Japanese national and, and like a politician, and you had 10 million Chinese people, uh, nationals, Taiwan, uh, you name it, pouring into your country, pouring into your country. Do you think Japan or any other country would just sit back and go, all right, let's not do anything about it. Let's just, let's just allow it to happen. No, no, no other nation on planet earth is doing this. The, just look at the data. You're looking at every single day, on average, seven to 20,000 people a day are pouring across our border. That's what we know about. And to put this into context, let's say the average is about 10,000, right? I, I will agree to that, 10,000. So every 10 days, the Rose Bowl in Pasadena is filled to capacity with individuals from 180 of 195 nations across the globe. And then on the 10th day at 12 midnight, I walk to the northern part of the Rose Bowl and I open the gates and I push everyone out into America. At the same time, my buddy in the Border Patrol opens the southern gate and I refill the Rose Bowl another 100,000 in 10 days. And this is going on every 10 days. Now, for this has to be discussed. There's 2,000 miles roughly of the southern border. At any given time, Clayton, 80% of the border is unmanned, meaning there's no border patrol agents. This has never been done. 1,600 miles of the border, no one's there. No one. So when the government tells you there's been 2 million getaways, people that cross the border undetected and absconded, that's a lie. Everyone in the business and knows that it's a one for one or a two for one, meaning everyone that you arrest, another person gets away. It's probably double, but on a conservative estimate, another 10 million people cross the border undetected and absconded on top of the other 10 to 11 million that have crossed the border, given up and the border patrols arrested. And we have about a 96, 97% release rate. We're not even holding, everyone is released, everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a special interest alien from a terrorist nation, you're, you're a Chinese national military age men, all of the continent of Africa, all of the Middle East, they're all coming as single adult males, military age, and we're releasing them all, all. And it, the tentacles, like you and I have been talking for about 20, 20 minutes, Clayton. It is, there is so much going on right now in the border. We haven't even discussed drugs and the fentanyl pouring into America and destroying America. We're not talking about the largest child sex trafficking in the history of, a, of the world. 600,000 young children have crossed the border by themselves, and we have released them to sponsors in America with no follow-up. This is not only an intentional destruction of America. It is a become a moral, sinful rot in America. And we are going to pay a heavy price. I hope people wake up. I mean, I can't think of a bigger story in the United States. It's you know, it's not Ukraine, it's not Iran, it's not you know it, it's it's not our funneling of money into into Israel into Ukraine. Uh, and you know, I, Vladimir Putin last week in that interview with Tucker Carlson said, "Don't you guys have anything better to do?" 
than get involved in a war in Ukraine. You have a border that's wide open. And when Donald Trump says the world is laughing at us, he's right about that. And you, and, I mean, you said something absolutely stunning to me, which is that we were six to nine months away from having the border secured with only 500 individuals coming across the border. So, I mean, this has to be a targeted, uh, intentional destruction of the United States with the sex trafficking, with the amount of people pouring across the United States border. I mean, I'll ask you a, a, you know, a 30,000 foot level question to get you out of here, JJ. And I'd love to have you back more deeply. We can deep dive a lot of these topics. But why do you think they're doing this? I absolutely, in the gut, in the depths of my soul, believe that they are fundamentally transforming America. And they're doing it from the illegal immigration system They destroyed it. And what they're trying to do is make a nation of non-citizens versus citizens. And you say, well, that's the replacement theory. Yes, that's their words. And the pushback on that, well, that's a very, I'm a white man. That's a very xenophobic thing to say. This has nothing to do with race or ethnicity. We have 180 nations out of 195 nations on the globe are in our arrest data. So this, get rid of all the the, the racism and xenophobic uh, things that you want to hurl at me. Just for example, how the replacement theory in December, okay, in December, the United States Border Patrol arrested 372,000 individuals, not the getaways, just the arrest data. They released 359,000 into America. America's native births in the month of December were 302,000. We were at a 57,000 deficit between illegal foreign nationals and American births. And we, we have seen that through the census data all the way through. So we are bringing in people by the millions and our birth rates are dropping. This is the replacement. Chuck Schumer says it. Joe Biden has said it out loud. Obama has said it. We are witnessing the complete destruction of America. And, and to go from a farther view and, and, and go down, how hard, if you, if you wanted to reset America, do you want to fight me and, and guys like me that believe in the Second Amendment, have firearms, understand the Constitution, understand the Bill of Rights, understand that that what the United States of America is, is a republic? Or is it easier to control people that are illiterate in their own language? 50% of them are illiterate in their own language. 100% of them or 90 some percent have like maybe a sixth grade education, no skills, and they're 100% dependent on the U.S. government to survive. Is it easier to control men like me or people like that? Well, and it is the answer is you can control them because they need you. Right. And we are mm-hmm. being systematically replaced. And building a system that you can control. Fi- yeah. Yes. And it's and you're right. It's it's this and, and you say, well, it's shocking about Trump, the greatest border president I ever worked for. He did things like he shut the the Northern Triangle, El Salvador. Uh, Guatemala, Honduras, and then Mexico, and told them, stand up your border patrol, because they have border patrol, and or your military, and shut everything down. And they said no, because they were used to dealing with impotent presidents. And he said, okay, I remember this. I lived it. I was there. No. And one day, President Trump said, okay, no foreign money at all. Nothing. You get nothing. They need it from us. (laughs) So they immediately said, yes, sir, we'll do what you want. And then like that, everything dropped. The border wall was 25% built. 25% 25% and we were down to 566 people a day. Do you know that 566 people a day across the nation is nothing? ICE was arresting thousands of people a day, a day and deporting massive criminals. And we're, excuse me, we're seeing the complete destruction of American citizenry from criminal elements that are coming through the border. Venezuela, just, the, just as we go out of 30,000 foot view, Venezuelan's murder rate is the lowest it's been in 22 years. Well, why is that? Well, they deported out of their nation, their own people, emptied all their prisons and insane asylums. And then when they're all here, Maduro tells Joe Biden just last week, hey, President, pound sand, we're not taking anyone back. No one that you arrest and you're gonna deport, we're taking no one back. So, and Joe Biden said, okay. So we have the young lady in in Georgia got murdered. That was a Venezuelan illegal alien that came across the border in El Paso in 2023, was arrested at least four times by an NYPD and and, uh, uh, the PD in Georgia. And they just released him, just released him. 
So, but I, that's just one of endless streams of rapes, murders. We're looking at a, a El Salvadorian last week, shot and killed a two-year-old, murdered a two-year-old with a gun. The rapes are off the chart. And this is what we just know about, right? How many other cases is the mainstream media vetting and pushing down so no one sees it? So this, from a 30,000 foot view, we're being replaced. Oh, you're blowing my mind, JJ. Um, and I'm sure our audience feels the same way. We need an absolute change right now, right now at our southern border. We need a change in Washington right now. Like this is a colossal mm -hmm. crisis, a colossal existential crisis for the United States of America. J.J. Carroll, his book is called Invaded. And here's what I want everyone to do right now. Anyone who's watching, go to Amazon, buy this book, and let's make this the number one book on Amazon right now and share it. Take it to libraries, buy a copy, buy a copy of it, share it around, do whatever you can to get this message out right now so people are aware of the crisis that we're facing in this country. JJ, I'd love to have you back on the show. We can di deep dive more of these topics. Of course, we've been covering the child uh, sex trafficking very deeply here on this show. It's very important to us here at Redacted. Um, and we can also, of course, cover the drugs that are flowing into the United States. But uh, I just want to thank you for your time today and covering this flight angle of the story. There's so many different pieces of this. JJ, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. I really appreciate your time. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.